is changing your life. You may have it in your body right now. It's the new coronavirus, aka SARS-CoV-2, while COVID-19 is the name of the disease caused by the virus. Do you know how this little bastard works? How does he attack our cells? And especially, where are the weaknesses that we can use to beat it? I try to explain it in simple words. My name is Sergio, I am a molecular biologist and a science writer. Remember to subscribe to the channel and to like my videos, because I'm sure you will like it. Let's start with the basics. What is a virus? During the 1950s, they asked this question to a famous scientist called Andre Lov, and he answered, a virus is a virus. <laughs> okay, the idea is that a virus is at the borderline of what we consider life. Viruses are the simplest organism on Earth, which is important because simplicity makes viruses hard to beat. But at the same time, simplicity is also a thing that we can leverage to fight them. All viruses have two things in common. They are very simple and they need another organism to reproduce and live. You can think of a virus as a computer virus inside a USB drive like this one. The malicious program in the drive cannot do anything unless it gets into a computer where it can use the processor, so the machine, to make copies of itself. This is actually very similar to what happens with a biological virus. A virus is an obligate parasite. Every morning a virus wakes up and knows it has to infect another cell to reproduce and make copies of itself. A huge number of copies. Independence is a big difference with bacteria. Bacteria have everything they need to live, reproduce, move, have a metabolism and so on. A virus is basically a very little box containing some genetic material that has the instruction to make other viruses. The genetic information can be coded into DNA or another molecule similar to DNA called RNA. For the coronavirus we are talking about RNA, meaning that their genetic material is made of RNA. RNA is a single-stranded molecule while DNA is a double strand and there are many differences between the two, but never mind. You just need to remember that RNA is a kind of genetic file that can transport some genetic information. The goal of this box, called a viral particle, is to insert the genetic material into another cell and hijack the cellular machinery to read the instructions and make many more copies of the virus that will exit the cell and infect other cells and make many other copies of the virus. I told you it's a little bastard, right? Where is the key that the coronavirus uses to enter our cells? A real virus enters an host cell by using a key and lock mechanism, just like our USB drive, but at a molecular level. The key or the keys are these structures called spikes that stick out of the surface of the virus. They are made of proteins and sugars and they are called spikes because, well, they look like spikes at the microscope. This picture is taken with an electronic microscope and you see this halo? These are the spikes surrounding each viral particle. Spikes also give the name to the coronavirus family because corona in Latin but also in Italian and Spanish means crown or wreath. You need some imagination, but scientists have plenty of imagination. This image is a computer rendering and it's better than my drawing. And here are the spikes, aka the keys that the little bastard uses to enter our cells. If you appreciate this video, do me a favor, put a like on the video and share it. And do yourself a favor, subscribe to this channel, it's too convenient unbelievable. If there's a key in the little bastard, there must be a lock in our cells. The lock is a cellular receptor called brace for impact. Angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor, ACE2 for the family. The ACE2 receptor is not born as a lock for the virus. Its normal function is to recognize an enzyme called ACE2 
and together receptor and enzyme they bind and regulate a lot of important things like the blood pressure, the heartbeat and so on. So the receptor is like the USB port and the enzyme is like the normal USB key. Cells have thousands of different receptors because they work as molecular antennas. Receptors are the way by which cells capture molecules, receive signals from the surroundings and even communicate with each other. So if you were a virus, you would probably look for a receptor to get inside a cell. The spikes from the coronavirus imitate the molecular structure of the ACE2 enzyme. You got it. There is a doorway in our cell and a virus that has a fake key to open the same doorway. Do you smell a scam here? Oh yeah, you should. Viruses are expert in this type of swindle and the swindle happens in three steps. First step, the handshake. So normally the ACE2 receptor recognizes the ACE2 enzyme, binds to it and takes the enzyme inside the cell to do a lot of useful things. But when the coronavirus is around, the spikes from the coronavirus bind to the ACE2 receptor and the receptor takes the spikes and the whole virus inside the cell because it thinks it's the enzyme. When the coronavirus knocks at the door, our cells behave like an old lady opening the house to a stranger, only to find out it's a dangerous con artist, ready for the second step, the wreck. The virus releases its RNA, its genetic instruction inside the cell. The cell has already thousands of other RNAs of its own. The RNA from the virus is just a drop in the ocean. But viruses do this all the time. They hijack the cellular machinery to work for them because they don't have one. The coronavirus has planted its own RNA into the cell and it tells the cell, hey, would you make these five or six proteins for me? And the cell says, why not? And makes the proteins for the virus. The first of these viral proteins is a molecular copy machine. It recognizes the RNA from the virus and makes thousands and thousands of copies of it. The RNA from the virus also tells the cell to produce the spikes and all the other components of the virus, which self-assemble with a little help again from the cell. And we are now ready for the last step, the bye-bye. The poor cell is now stuffed with viral particles, but it's not over yet because the virus fools the cell into believing all these viral particles, well, they're just rubbish. So the cell puts the viral particles into its garbage bags, which are small bubbles of cell membrane that flow to the surface, fuse with the surface of the cell, and finally spit out viral particles. And these viral particles are now ready to infect other cells. The infection harms or kills the cells and triggers tissue damage and inflammation. Inflammation is an immune reaction that is meant to protect the body, but sometimes, sadly, can make more damage than the virus itself, causing an uncontrolled reaction called cytokine storm that can be fatal. This type of scam where a virus uses fake keys to infect the cells is very, very common. What changes are the locks and the keys and therefore every type of virus has its own favorite target. For example, HIV, the AIDS virus, attacks white blood cells. The hepatitis C virus attacks the liver cell and so on. Where are the cells with the ACE2 receptor where the coronavirus can get in? Well, they are pretty everywhere, in the heart, in the blood vessel, in the kidneys, but the real important ones are in the respiratory system. The coronavirus can attack every cell that has the ACE2 receptor, and in fact, there are some patients with symptoms in other organs, like the heart or kidneys. However, the coronavirus enters our body through the mouth and nose. The cells in the respiratory system have the ACE2 receptor 
and are the first part of the body that the virus can find on its journey. This may explain why the more common symptoms of the COVID-19 are respiratory, going from a bad cold to cough to severe pneumonia in the worst cases. Strengths and weaknesses of the coronavirus. First strength, simplicity. Like all simple machines, a virus has only a few parts that can break and a few targets that our immune system or a drug can attack. Viruses live inside our cells and they are very difficult to attack without killing the cells and causing damage. Second strength, evolution. A virus has a very simple genome and it reproduces with incredible speed. A human generation is 20, 30 years. A virus generation is a few minutes, which means that they can evolve quite rapidly. RNA viruses like the coronavirus tend to mutate more rapidly than DNA viruses. Rapid evolution is also the motor behind the spillovers, which is when a virus mutates and adapts to infect a different organism. I'll talk about spillover in another video, so follow this channel. First weakness of the coronavirus and all other viruses, again, simplicity. Without a cell to infect, a virus is very weak and cannot survive in the environment. Think of a virus as a USB pen left alone on the street, but made of organic perishable material, not plastic, with sun, heat, moisture, chemicals, breaking everything. Outside an organism, a virus is very vulnerable. And that's why washing your hands with soap is a very effective way to get rid of the coronavirus. Second weakness, the fake keys, aka the spikes, need to be exposed outside the surface of the virus because they must get in contact with the cellular receptor and cannot stay hidden and protected inside the box. The immune system, for example, can see the spikes more easily, creating, for example, antibodies. What are the strategies we can use against the coronavirus? The most obvious is a vaccine. A vaccine is a way to prepare our immune system so that it produces antibodies against a microorganism. As of August 2020, when I am shooting this video, there are more than 150 vaccines in development against the SARS-CoV-2. Many of these vaccines target the spikes. Many people ask, uh, well, if the coronavirus mutates so rapidly, how can we get a vaccine that works? Actually, this is a good question. Well, in principle, this can be a problem. And we know that there are different strains of this coronavirus around with different mutations. But in practice, these mutations so far do not seem to change the effectiveness of a vaccine. Vaccines are usually designed to target parts of the virus that do not change very often. For example, certain regions of, of the spikes are needed to recognize the receptor and the strain of virus with a mutated spike that does not work will probably not survive. Again, this is the situation at this moment, August 2020, and it could change because a pandemic is a dynamic situation by definition. While waiting for a vaccine, another thing is to design drugs that will block the spikes. It's like blocking the USB plug with something so it cannot reach a computer. Some drugs that today are under development are actually based on this concept. You remember the copy machine? The one that produces copies of the viral RNA. Well, this is another promising target. And actually some drugs like remdesivir are based on this principle. As I speak, August 2020, there is no yet a definitive treatment or vaccine for COVID-19. But research is moving very rapidly. The number of clinical trials for COVID-19 is unprecedented in the history of epidemics. And by the time you'll see this video, there may be interesting new developments. I just wanted to give you an overview of the features of this little bastard and why researchers are looking at them to find a solution. I'll be back with more videos soon. Be smart, be gentle, stay safe, and more importantly, follow this channel. See you next time.